I'm sure you'll forgive me. Good morning, everyone. Um, yesterday, uh, Barbara gave an overview of what we have been have been talking about for the last couple of weeks, and we had a great discussion uh, in regards to uh, certainty, and it led us into other areas. Um, Ron spoke with me about some things that he saw, and um, he wanted to relate to us uh, today. However, as we, uh, as is customary, if there are questions about what we talked about yesterday, or questions about anything in particular, um, would you all raise those questions now, please? We'd be most appreciative if you would. If there are no questions, may I ask, um, Barbara, is there anything that you would like to um, to add to what we were talking about yesterday? Okay, she may not be in yet. Ron, um, would you um, I just introduce that? Uh, oh, okay. Is there anything you, you would about? like to add? Are you, are you talking to Barbara? Yes, Barbara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm um, talking to Barbara, Barbara. Okay. Um, the only thing that, uh, well, it's not the only thing. The thing that I've been thinking about is that uh, we've been talking about uh, um, um, being who we are as Elohim. And one of the things that we cannot do is to um, um, uh, denigrate uh, people who do not agree with us, whether it's uh, 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 denigrate to the point that we, we say that they're, they're, they're not worth it. Everybody is worth something, whether it's misogynist, whether it's... Uh, the Jeffrey F. Keys of the world, the pedophiles, or whether it's the anti-vaxxers, we've got to be careful not to um, allow anger to build up in us at, at what has occurred. Um, because we've had our seasons of anger as we, and I'm not saying not to be angry, I'm saying not to allow the anger to overtake us uh, to the point that it separates us from being who we really are. Um, Elohim um, is compassionate. And while we don't agree with everything, uh, to say that, uh, um, to say that the Rick, Rick Scott of, of, of Texas is abominable and, and, and is irredeemable uh, is not the answer. Uh, because while we don't agree with all of the anti-voting laws here uh, in Georgia and Texas, wherever they are, as long as we breathe, we have the responsibility for putting in the macro um, um, the deity that's in everyone. So that at some point in time, someone has access to that and remembers who they are. So that that major thing I've been thinking about. Terrific. I, I, I do um, agree with you wholeheartedly, regardless of the um, intellectual um, debates or discussions in regards to those things. When we uh, integrate someone, um, we are minimizing their opportunity to become human. And when we do that, it really is speaking to our own insecurity. When, when you are secure in who you are, you don't denigrate. You seek to elevate those who are, don't know who they are to the place where they are able to see themselves. So yes, ma'am, I do agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, 
one of the immigration. Uh, go ahead, Ron. No, sir, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. I thought you were done. Please go ahead. No, since we're going to say denigration uh, actually uh, robs us of the uh, energy that's necessary to express our experiences in a positive way. That's all. I, uh, I I just had to have to have the television on this morning. I was fixing to something that even wasn't really paying attention to it, but. You know, the story on about this these ancient uh, samurai warriors, and, and they were interviewing this guy. And one of the things he said that really made me stop and get my atten- caught my attention was he said, "You have to be in complete control control of yourself. Uh, that you cannot let anything control you." And, and that got my attention, and and. Uh, and I thought about a bunch of things uh, from from your emotions and feelings and your 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 sensuous uh, 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 impulses. Everything is tied up in that statement. And w- when Barbara talked about that, that's, you you do get angry. You have your emotions for a reason, but you cannot be controlled by them. And uh, that, that what he said that is just just kind of got my attention. I thought about it when, when she said what she said. So, thank you. That, yes, sir. That's how um, emotions become weak. Uh, they weaken us when we allow them to control us regardless of what those emotions are. And when you are in a weakened state, uh, it is highly improbable, if not impossible, uh, for you to embrace uh, those things that need to be dealt with in your life. Um, And those are are the things that actually influence our thought patterns. And when we allow our emotions to control us and influence our thoughts, that changes our whole perception and the trajectory of our journey. So it's imperative that we um, disallow uh, our emotions to be in control of us. So, because actually, we don't change ourselves if we are unable to change how we think. So, Pastor, I got a question then. Uh-huh. So when scripture says, be angry, or you're going to get angry, well, be angry, but sin not. So the sin not is what part that you're talking about? Uh, being ang- be angry, but don't let your anger get you entangled in things that are antithetical, in things that are not in line with the spiritual essence of who you are. You can be angry, but you don't have to denigrate people. You can be angry with um, Mitch McConnell, but you don't um, treat him or talk about him as though uh, he is less than or he is not, as Barbara stated earlier, uh, worthy of being um, uh, embraced. However, if you are, when you're angry and sin, you get entangled in all kinds of things. Uh, you end up cursing someone out. You end up saying things that you regret later, or you end up doing something that you that is truly reprehensible that you uh, regret later. Did I help you, Evelyn? Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Barbara, is there anything else that you would like to um, bring to our attention? Um, no, sir. I think that that's it for right, for right now. Okay. Thank you, my dear. Um, Ron, would you share with us what you've seen, please? Okay. Good morning, y'all. Um, this is really nothing new. This is something we've discussed. I just see a different part of it. 
um, and, and I want to discuss it because I think it's important based on the last, uh, some of the, the conversations and discussions that we had on yesterday. Uh, what I want to talk about is embracing evil, evilness. Uh, what is the purpose of evilness and how do we face it? And, and is it necessary to be embraced? Uh, just, just, I want to read something as, as a background, and this is going to be uh, the foundation or the principal part of our discussion that we can go back to at any time, okay? Uh, Isaiah 45 verses 6 and 7, and I'm going to read this, and I'm going to go to some other verses, but I'm going to read this for us. And like I say, this this kind of be uh, our go-to. But this is uh, the Lord talking. This is God talking, and Elohim talking. He says, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading 45, and I'm just going to read verses 5, 6, and 7, okay? And uh, I, I, we don't say this a lot. But I, I'm thinking uh, there may be some on here that uh, wonder what version of the Bible that we read from. I'm reading this from the New American Standard, just in case there's someone on here that, that may not be familiar with uh, how the text reads, okay? Uh, but verses uh, 5, 6, and 7 in Isaiah 45 says, I am the Lord, and there is no other beside me. The, there is no God. I will gird you through, through you have not known me, that men may know from the rising of the setting of the, of the sun that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord and there is no other. The one forming light and causing dark, creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. I am the Lord who does all these, all these. And I think in King James, it says, uh, uh, reads a little differently. It says, one who forms uh, the light and creates evil is how it's written in King James, if I remember correctly. So that's some scripture that we have talked about briefly in the past, but have not elaborated. And I'm not sure that, uh, you know, everybody... uh, is, is familiar with that, but I thought it was worth reading because it's going to come into play here. I'm wanting to talk about this because we talk about, we're at the place now, we talk about going back to the beginning uh, and being one with the universe. And, and Pastor on yesterday talked about uh, what that looks like. And that's what kind of got my mind to going. Uh, it is it, 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 I, I listened to, to Kathy, and Kathy got here far more easily than I did. Uh, some of the things that we talked about in the last few weeks about forgiveness and, and, and forgiving the man who killed the young woman in front of her mother, that took me a little while to get there. Uh, I, I readily admit that I, my feelings and emotions kept me from seeing forgiveness. And and but at the same time, I'm I'm wanting to see what you do to how to you how do I embrace that? Or uh, looking at it from that perspective, or uh, what I don't think we have a, a clear picture of. Or I hadn't given a lot of thought to. Maybe 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 I'm the one that doesn't have the clear picture. But the scripture talks about Adam. And whether or not you see what Adam did as a sin or whatever, and most of us call it a fall, uh, what, however you see it, uh, it touched your life. You are held responsible for it. So how is, how is that, that that you are part of what happened there? So what that says to me is everything that happens in the earth to the human affects everyone else. It has an effect on you. So things that take place are either bringing you in balance or taking you out of balance. So if you use that part of the Adam, that that human, uh, I want to talk about the other Adam being Jesus for just a minute. And and again, uh, 
I'm kind of trying to talk this out. So uh, if I'm not making sense, please tell me, okay? If you look at the other, if you look at Jesus, and I'm calling him the other Adam, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the human, uh, the thing that Jesus embraced, I want to just kind of emphasize for just a minute. Uh, Jesus is a version of going back to the beginning as well. He was, his beginning was being one with the Father going to the cross. His, his beginning was enduring what he did. He tells us to take up your cross daily and follow me. Well, in him taking up his cross, he did not endure enlightenment alone. He endured the darkness. He entered the cross being the sins of the world. So, again, uh, looking at it from that perspective, you know, I'm looking at what is evilness and how do we embrace it? And how does it fit into going back to the beginning? What do we see? Because what that says to me, that everything that happens in the earth has an influence on the rest of us. And if there is a, a group, a small group uh, uh, that has embraced the concept of being the human in the earth, then you take on that responsibility more than anyone else. So the thing that happened with the young lady dying, not only is my identity in the woman who sat there and watched her daughter die, my identity is the one being killed and the one doing the killing. So how does that all fit in, uh, in into the concept of returning to the beginning of being one with uh, the universe? Uh, I'm going to stop there for just a second and see if we got any questions before I go on to, to some other scriptures. Is this making sense at all? It is. Okay. I want to, uh, if, if, if you will, please. Um, Ron, uh, I'm sorry, Ron. Yes, ma'am. Um, sorry. Just a reminder. Um, even David, uh, who, was, who was the servant uh, of the Lord, murdered, uh, had someone murdered uh, at one end of the spectrum, and at the other end of the spectrum was beloved of his people. So if you're talking about um, this idea of um, balance and this idea of uh, 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 discord and harmony all balancing out. Uh, we have evidence of, of, of that in the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's what I'm getting at. All the stuff that we see, uh, we, we, we have to readily face and not, not dismiss. And, 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 and this might be a lesson I'm just really talking to me it, it's this is kind of an eye opener to me because of where i am and some of my thoughts but but the, the evilness that we we look at uh at times i allow to overwhelm me and i'm seeing this from a different perspective because the question is is there anything anything evil we can do to out evil god and you say, how, how dare you say that? How can you out evil God? That's why I read Isaiah. God says, I'm responsible for this. So put it in perspective that nothing new is happening under the sun. As it says in Ecclesiastes, we are this and it is us. And because we are the, the, the one seeking uh, the, the, the faith of humanity and knowing what that means and what it how to embrace that uh we have to embrace it all we have to see and embrace right. it all yes sir um when you talk about nothing you talk about even as rather when we look at that uh, through the uh, correct lenses what we see is that those things that we deem to be to be bad versus good are actually 
experiences that pushes us to the brink of identifying who we are. The without what we deem to be bad or evil being in existence, we would not be on this journey. Um, The same energy that brings about that which is good also produces that which is evil. And that would have to be true because the scripture that you read from Isaiah says it came from the same source. So the energies are the same. However, the purpose for them existing are, are, are different in that they look different. But the, um, the end game is the same. Both pushes us to seeing who we are and, uh, and uh, gives us opportunity to embrace our experiences so that we can become the humans that we were put in these bodies to be. I'm done. Is, is, the, basis, is the basis of uh, what we call evil and good our interpretation then? For instance, if something is, is, is for me, we consider it good, but if it's against me, we consider it evil. And, and, and that against me is how I interpret something. But have I stood back and looked at the bigger picture to see what this presumed against me will do, as you say, to push me toward being who I was purposed to be, getting me out of my rut or whatever. Um, and, so part and it of doesn't what mean. To... Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. No, go, go, go. No, no, go ahead. Complete your statement. So, so, so uh, we have to step back and look at the whole picture and and just and understand that there there is nothing that that's here to destroy me. It is everything. Everything works together for my good. If you start at that premise, right. whether we interpret it as evil or not, when we start at that premise, then we can take a step back and not be judgmental initially and just look at how it, it, it flows and how it, how it shapes out. And that, that, that then is our opportunity to transform those perceptual evil thoughts that we had because we thought something was against us into something not evil. And and that doesn't mean that the person who kills someone is not prosecuted for it. It doesn't mean at all. It doesn't mean that I sit on the jury and forgive the person and find them not guilty. No, that's not how that works. Um, I don't want anyone to get the idea that when, when Ron is talking about as an example, the young lady who was uh, murdered, that by, he's not by any means or any stretch of the imagination saying that the person who did it um, should, walk, uh, walk, should walk free according to the law. No, ma'am. No, sir. That's not it at all. I'm done. On, on the heels of what Pastor and Baba just said, what, what I'm also trying to, to show, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, I was going to say it to the end, but it's a great way in right now, is there are not, my, my assumption is anyway, there are not too many people out there in the earth besides us at this point who embracing the, the aspect of, of life called humanity. Uh, and, and gaining an understanding of that. There may be some on the other side who are cheering for us, but they have no power in what is going on right now. That's where you are at the human. And, and where, I, where I had no power, what I'm saying is, as we've discussed before, is when we embrace the humanity of, of my being, we see that we have influence in both worlds. And in and, and all dimensions, as Pastor will get to at, either later today or at another time. But 
we, we are the only ones that can do that. So what does that mean? As you grow in your awareness of your humanity, these things that happen in the world, in the earth, in the universe, you take on as being your own. Example, uh, there are people who don't hurt for that woman who was killed, who know her, who who, who may not be uh, family members, but it, it was an experience of shock and now it's over. But it still bothers me deeply, as I know some of you, because of, of, of who I am and my awareness now. So you take on those things. Someone has to, because evilness is a part of the balance that we are seeking. So as we, as we grow in these, what I'm saying is we can no longer shun it or, or, or just say, I forgive that person. We have to turn and face it and embrace it. And and as we go along, uh, I would suppose that we will become more and more sensitive to these uh, episodes if and how they continue. Does that make sense, y'all? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's look at Second Chronicles for just a minute, okay? I'm going to read some verses out of there. And uh, I'm going to read these verses and uh, say a little piece. Then I'm going to kind of hush because I don't have a whole lot. I just kind of, uh, it, it was really a thought that uh, that, that I'm trying to, to get us to see it. I thought maybe once we see it, we, we'll get some, some dialogue from it, okay? Second Chronicles chapter 20. And there is a lot in this chapter. And, and please understand, I'm not looking at this verse by verse, or maybe even not the, uh, the, 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 the full message that it's trying to convey here. Uh, I'm trying to look at a concept here that uh, supports what I'm saying about evilness and uh and by all means, if you see other verses other than what I read that support that, please feel free to, to read them and expound upon them, okay? Uh, Second Chronicles 20. Uh, this is Judah is, is, is about to be invaded. And uh, someone comes and tells the king that the enemies are coming up against him. And this is... This is after they're in the promised land. They've gone through the wilderness. They've gone out of Egypt. And look and behold, they, they come up to be invaded. And I'm going to uh, read this. Uh, let's see where I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to just start in verse 9, I think. Okay, And then I'll kind of walk it back a little bit. It says, should evil come upon us? Swore the judgment of pestilence or famine. Will we stand before the Lord, before the house, and before thee, and thy name is in the house, and cry to thee in our distress, and thou wilt hear and deliver us, talking to God. And now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou did not, listen to this, this is one of the key verses. Whom thou did not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. They turned aside from them and did not destroy them. So he's saying these people were come up against us and why we were mighty. Why you were with us, Father, why we could see you. Uh, we had opportunity to destroy them, but you did not let us do it. These are our enemies, and you did not let us destroy them. So if you walk back and look at this, uh, he, he tells you uh, Ammon and Moab. Where did Ammon and Moab come from? These are the seeds of Lot. When Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, his daughters got him drunk, 
and they they slept with their father. These are the 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 nations that came out of that. The scripture says that Lot is a righteous man, and being a righteous man, or uh, you look at this and and say, well, where how could this be? How can this evilness be coming up against Israel? Uh, the reason why I believe God did not allow them to destroy them because you cannot destroy yourself. You cannot destroy the evilness and still maintain who you are. This evilness was a part of who Israel was. So when you look at this, when you look at the whole of it, and that's what I'm saying, if you could see this from the spiritual perspective, or you as being, you have, have dedicated yourself, you have given up your free will, I'm saying you, I mean us, or uh, the people on this line, we've given up our will, we have dedicated ourselves, and we continuously move forward in our understanding of what it means to be human. And you are the one that takes on this responsibility. So the evilness is yours, as well as the righteousness. And yeah, yes, please. Because I want to make sure, I'm going to make sure I hear it. I'm hearing clearly, okay? Okay. So, would I be correct in saying that the Ammonites, who were the descendants of Lot, are really that this is really a um, a what a story a spiritual a, a story about a physical family with a spiritual meaning. That the animals yes. actually, they actually are the evil side of us, as opposed yes. to just being a group of people. They are more than that. They are an evil expression of our being, and and um, to destroy that would be um, to be self-destructive, to destroy oneself. And if we understand that, then what? the Lord is saying, what Yahweh is saying is, um, I'll transform that portion, that part of you. Am I making sense? Yes, Is that sir. what I'm hearing? Because yes, that, yes, that speaks to the, that speaks to the dimensions of what I'm saying. And, 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 and that's uh-huh. it exactly, Pastor. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, you got me go excited. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Quick, quick. I, I interrupted you. You, uh-huh. you bring clarity. So when when it, when they came out of Egypt, they came from a place of total ignorance of self. They came from a space of religious barbarism, uh, a place where the thoughts of men prevailed. And they were not human. So what I'm saying is that the cramped space of Egypt is a place where we are not human. We are living by our instincts as opposed to the wisdom of our creation. And when we move to the wilderness, it is that space and time where we began to awaken and become aware of who we are. And in relationship to the scripture that you read, Yahweh was saying to them, do not look at, do not look in this mirror and die by suicide because of what you see. I will handle it. I will guide you so that you do in this awakened state would be able to move to a place of oneness by embracing uh, that which appears to be evil to you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Any questions, y'all? Does that that make sense to everybody? Questions, comments? I I, I I, listened to someone. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Oh, no, sir. Go ahead. I, I listened I, I listen to someone talk about the uh, different dimensions. And it dawned on me that this the, the um, group that called the fifth dimension, if you listen to their song, uh, they were in a place where most people were not during that period of time in terms of their thought. Uh, what we live, what we have lived in since the beginning of time has been, not since the beginning of time, I'm sorry, since our intersection with other people in this earth, we have devolved to a space in time called the third dimension. And we see things in three dimensions. And in doing that, we only live by what we see with our eyes and what we are able to identify with our five senses, smell, touch, sight, etc. And that's the world that we live in. However, when this thing called evilness begins to prevail, it pushes us to search for something better. And in the search for something better, we are actually searching for ourselves, but we don't know it. That search carries us to a wilderness or puts us in a wilderness state. And a wilderness state is a place where everything appears to be barren. And that place appears to be chaotic. That's the fourth dimension. That fourth dimension is a space in time that has been set aside for us to explore our identity in relationship to our creator. During that period of exploration, we are still bound by time. However, when we began to embrace what we deem to be evil and see that it is simply a catalyst as opposed to something that is uh, destructive or something that is used to denigrate us or to uh, uh, dehumanize us, it's actually, that which is evil is actually uh, something that is presented to us that catapults us to a desire to become human. And when we embrace what we call evil, it is at that point that we begin the journey of unicity with our creator. And when Barbara talked about the idea, the concept of certainty that moves us beyond doubt, When we embrace that certainty, being being certain without doubt that there is no bad, there is no good, everything is relative to our pursuit of divinity. When that happens, that's when we embrace or that's when we move into a space of um, the fifth dimension. And the fifth dimension in physics speaks to the idea of gravity and electromagnetic, electromagnetism uh, being a seamless entity or seamless energy. Uh, in, in spiritual terms, it speaks, the fifth dimension speaks to a seamless unicity between the human and the, divin- and the divine. And that seamlessness between the human and the divine is simply saying that the physical is not dominated by the spiritual, and the spiritual is not ignored by the physical. They both become one, and they exist in, in harmony with the universe, i.e. with our creator, and with everything that has been and will be created. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Questions, y'all? Comments? Is that what? Mm-hmm. 
What do you mean by embrace evil? I beg your pardon? Uh, what do you mean by embrace evil? When I, when I speak of embracing evil, I'm saying recognize, as Ron started, they stated at the onset, recognize that if all of us are one, whatever is in one is in all of us. It does not mean that we act on it, but it does mean that we recognize the necessity in our correcting it. The correction of evil is the transformation of the energy that causes someone to act in a, in a barbaric way. If I condemn someone for what they do and see them as being less than as opposed to seeing them as being ignorant of who they were created to be, then I never make the move to bring them to a place where they can see who they were created to be. However, if I embrace the reality that they need to be changed, that they need to be shown who they are, that in itself works hand in hand with forgiveness. The idea of forgiveness speaks to the concept of restoration. If I don't see them as being worthy of, of, the, of restoration, then I don't see, I, then I have not embrace that evilness. However, if I see them as being a worth of, res of uh, restoration, I embrace that evil. It doesn't mean that I go along with it. It doesn't mean that I agree with what they did, but it means that I recognize it for what it is. And in recognizing it for what it is, I see it as a catalyst to bring this person as well as all persons to a place of you of humanness. Does that help you? Yes. Thanks, Uncle James. I'm going to uh, re read a couple more verses and we can continue. Pastor, you can continue or um, I can start back and, and anybody uh, jump in when you when you got a question or comment, okay? I just want to bring in verse 16, because they, they, they start praying. They're praying to God and, uh, you, you know, it, it, and what is going on, and, and God is listening to them, and uh, God hears them, and, and, and it says... Uh, Ron, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in considering what, what evil is and its role, the fact that we need to embrace it. Will evil always be with us in this realm? Here, here's my answer to that. Here's my answer to that. And I, and I, I invite everyone who has a, any input to, to please help me with this. I see things happening, and, and they're happening a lot here because no one embraces it. And they're happening because someone needs to take a hold of it. Uh, you can inhale. I, I can take, put you in a room full of oxygen, and you can inhale all you want. But if you don't know how to exhale, you're going to die. You're gonna, it, it's not going to do you any good. So I see enlightenment, good and evil, as, as breathing. One supports the other. One brings balance to the other. It is no coincidence that all these things happen. Uh, our pastor sent me an article yesterday about uh, they're, they're saying that all the, well, not all, but a lot of the guns that are going across the nation doing evil things and, and uh, illegal things in New York and D.C. and other places are coming from South Carolina. Well, that's no coincidence. All this stuff is happening so that we can embrace it. We turn toward it because someone has to see it. It, 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 it. It's almost like looking at the light is easy. Looking at the light or, or embracing the light uh, is, is not costing you anything. But being embracing the evilness is, 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 to me, part of picking up the cross and taking responsibility for mankind. So it is here 
because someone has to bring balance into the earth. As the pastor put it, it is the catalyst that we see. And, and, and how long it remains and at the intensity that it re- remains uh, belongs to us as well. Because at some point, if, 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 uh, if we are to keep the world or anyone else from seeing things as evil, then we have to move to a place that is no longer evil. In other words, we see breathing as, as inhale and exhaling as, the, as being one in the same from the same source. And we able to embrace it and see that it all means or, or, or brings about the same results. So if I move to a place where things stop appearing to me to be evil, that forgiveness is there, then I'm always at a place of forgiveness. I'm always at a place of compassion. And that helps my fellow man. Remember how this started. Those little voices in each and every one of us, those little things in each and one, every one of us is what we're trying to see here, that what we're trying to embrace. And I change the world by changing me. And I get influenced by Barbara changing Barbara, and James Richard changing James Richard, and Audrey changing Audrey. And all of us coming together collectively because we are one, and we are one with the universe. We influence the universe. We influence those around us. So that's kind of my answer. I'm not sure. If, I hope I answered it. Anyone else can, can help with that, please. Um, I would like to try. The scripture talks about in the midst of the new Jerusalem, this in the midst of this energy of righteousness, this this righteous attitude and personality, in the midst of it, there is a tree. There is the knowledge. With, as a tree with leaves of healing, uh, there is the knowledge of healing. Uh, there, there is an experience of healing. And the reason it talks of having leaves is because there are different approaches to bringing about healing. Uh, what that's actually saying is that there will always be our uh, evilness in our midst. However, we will approach differently. We will, because of our experience, our spiritual experiences, we'll know how to bring healing uh, to those to that to those um, who are who are being expressive of evilness, of unrightness, we'll be able to bring rightness to them. We'll be able to do that, not necessarily by the land on his hands as much as uh, by the spiritual authority that we recognize we are. So I, I hope that helps. So at some point, I would like to address the power of our spiritual authority when we exist in the fifth dimension. So, Ever. so you're both saying that um, when we sort of get it right, then things will come in the balance, basically, yes? Yes. Ron? Yes, I agree with that. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I'll agree that we, we'll we'll just go on with that, and, and I think it's a further further no, no, no. Uh, um, it? Well, well, I, I'm I'm just I, I'm trying I'm I'm trying to see what I um, what I'm trying to say here. Uh, it, it's 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 not it's not easy to say that there will never be evilness, but I, I'm saying that once it it becomes embraced and in the spiritual realm, and someone takes responsibility for it, it looks different. It looks different because men start to recognize that they're not animals, and it does okay. not take on. Yeah, I, I think it does not take on the same form that that we we see and understand it to be now. At least, at least that's what I'm I'm trying to see. What I'm 
that they will be on right. here standing Peter, for you. Peter cut the man's ear off, right? Yeah. In the garden, he, he Peter severed the man's ear with the sword. Jesus restored that ear. Why, if it were not an evil thing, why would he, why he, why would he reattach the ear? It's more to it than, than attaching an ear or detaching an ear. It speaks to the allegory that, that that um, uh, the message within the allegory that, uh, that. When we are aware, fully aware of who we are, we we replace that which has been detached. When the ear is cut off, we we restore it so that Peter can see that this is not the journey that brings you to a place of unicity with our Creator. So that Peter can see that the war that we that we are engaged in is not a physical war using physical implements. That this is, uh, the, the, the weapons of our warfare is not carnal. The weapons of our warfare is spiritual. So we, we don't use the sword to detach the ear. We use the, the uh, righteous words to restore righteous hearing. Does that make sense? That's what I see, Ron, when you say it looks different. Yes, it does. Thank you. That, that's clarity. And, and please let me apologize for the, for the sirens. I, I live close to downtown. I'm, I just forget oh, to mute my phone. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say something else with that, Ron. Uh, when you said it looks differently, part of that balance of how the evilness is expressed is... Uh, how much selfishness is out there too. If you reduce the selfish nature, then in in general, because we're all connected, if we're less selfish, you have less evil. And so when you start dictating how it looks, it depends on how much selfishness is out there too. And then it bounces back to what Rev said. uh, It's just uh, recognizing who we are, but you reduce the selfishness, you reduce the evil expression. Exactly. That's exactly right. In, in, in other words, I think we're all saying the same thing. As 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 men, uh, as mankind began to see, become aware of who he is and know that he is more. He may never get to a point where he he sees himself fully, but he 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 will see that it is more to to me than just being a physical being. I I, am, I do not have to live as an animal, and I'm using that term because that's that's where we. Where we are all right. right. Ron, yeah. um, it kind of yes, strikes ma'am. me when Pastor said, why did he why did he restore his ear? Um, and it just struck me because I think because Jesus needed him to hear, not only in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense too. Um, so when when we restore people and they don't have all these issues to deal with, to grapple with, to fight against, to feel like they need to fight against, when we restore people, then they can hear with their spiritual ear, they can see with their spiritual eyes. So, um, Uh, even though, yeah, that's part of the reason we have to embrace evil, so that we can at some point restore that person so they can get to beyond that and on to their own spiritual path. Um, um, this, yeah, uh, something, something, Barbara, may I say did something, John, let me, uh, just a moment, of course, it won't take long. Um, when we talk about embracing, what struck me is that when when if if your child does something that's not right, you don't push them away from you, you hug them, you embrace them. You're not embracing what they did and trying to make it right. You embrace them saying to them that you were wrong. I'm not rejecting you. I'm correcting you. That's the same principle. 
andra. Uh, this is Barbara. When I when I when I look at the Hebrew word for evil, it's resh zari, zari. But when it's read backwards, zari resh. It's like a, it's awakened, like to awaken to a far more profound understanding, which is what Audrey was talking about. And so, again, the transformation occurs in how we begin to um, interpret and perceive things. It, it, it occurs in, 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 in our minds. And so, again, everything, everything is meant for our good, every single thing. Even the perceived evil is meant for our good. Now, let, let, let me show you how that, that fits into this, and we'll continue our discussion. Thank you, everyone, because everything, everything's right on, right, on, uh, right on cue here, right? It lines up perfectly with what we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to skip a, to, to verse 16 and 17 and read that and then kind of tie it together and open it back up for discussion. Uh, this, is the, this is one of the... Uh, always been one of my favorite scriptures, I guess, uh, where that God said, the uh, great multitude, don't be afraid of the great multitude because the battle is not yours, it, it's God's. Okay. Verse 16 continues and says, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come by the accent of Zer, and you will find them at the end of the valley in the front wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourself, stand, and, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Israel. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out and face them, for the Lord is with you. Now, listen to what everybody said. I'm going to back all the way up uh, to verses 9 and 10 coming out of Egypt. I'm going to say this slightly different than what Pastor said, but it's the same thing. At least I hope it is. Egypt, to me, represents your religious part, that, that, that religious part that doesn't know any better. It, it, it represents your false beginning because it is a false beginning because your forefathers didn't know any better. They didn't know any better. Egypt is the place where man, your, your loved ones, people who care about you or, or take you because there's a famine in the land. There's a famine here. So you are going to survive. The physical part of you needs to survive. But it's also the part where you have not experienced your creator. You're only going by what you've heard. You're only going by the story that you heard in the past when you talk about or uh, uh, I can't remember any of the songs now. But when you talk about the, those from the 12 tribe that originally went there. Uh, so here you are. You're coming out of a place. You're, you're getting to know. You're walking into a wilderness because you never knew your creator. Your experience has been that of religion. So everything that uh, is in you is about to be uprooted. It's about to be cleansed. So no, I can't let you destroy that which is uh which you you do not know of you think this looks bad you think this portion of you it, that that is evil or uh, is, is something that's going to destroy you it's not going to destroy you you wait till you are at a more mature place till you see that this is what your balance is this is what's going to bring you balance so right now just turn aside from it you concentrate on me concentrate on your creator concentrate on on uh, Elohim and knowing, figuring out who you are. And what you'll see is right now, this battle is not yours. This is not yours because you are not ready yet. You are not spiritually equipped yet. You do not recognize at this time that you are the human. But I'm going to show you a part of this. You do not ignore the evilness. Now you're going to turn and face it. Before I had you to walk away from it, you turned aside from it. 
But now that we have some experiences together, now that you're beginning to see who you are, now that you trust who you are, now that you know that when adversity comes to you, you turn to me. When you reach that point, I'm going to show you, put down your weapons, put down your earthly weapons and turn to me. And I'm going to show you how to face this that you call evil. I'm going to show you how to face your adversity and embrace it because this is what's going to take you forward. Now, go back to what Barbara said. Go back to what Audrey said. Go back to what Pastor said. Go back to what ST said. And any of y'all can jump in and talk at this point. Uh, this is, is, is a, at the place where you are seeing balance. You're recognizing this is all coming together. You are coming into an awakening. The sun is rising. There is a new day. There's a new part of you that you are beginning to see. So now, now let's continue the discussion because we, we were on a roll here. Anybody? Please. The, Amen, brother. We are talking about the age of synchronicity between the human and the creator. What I see here is, is what you are describing, rather, is where we are at this moment. On the battlefield, facing our fears. If, you, if we don't face our greatest fear, in this space called time, then when we, if we were to be allowed to enter the garden experience or to enter the place or the space where we are aware, fully aware of the human relationship between a wound in us, our fields will become giants and will have the ability to not destroy us, but cause us to shriek from who we are all over again. However, what the Creator is saying to yeah, to the uh, to the um, to Israel to the Hebrews is your the people you see are not the ones to be feared. The things that they that you perceive they are capable of doing to you is not the thing to fear. What your fears are is actually your insecurity. It is your thoughts about who you are not as opposed to who you are. So now that you are in this space of time, take inventory of everything that besets you, everything that causes you to be afraid and face it, not with a physical weapon, but with the, with the knowing that you are are not alone, but not only that. The battle of thought, the war between concepts is not yours to wage. When you face your greatest fears, when you face your insecurities, when you face those things that causes you to speak harshly of others, it is at that point that I will give you the wisdom to understand the, the reason they are what they are. And when you understand the reason they are what they are, when you understand that your greatest fears were not there to destroy you, but to bring you to this place in time so you can be transform and enter a place 
where, where there is no time. It is at that point that you begin to realize that you are the policy maker. You are the power source of this earth realm. You are the one who makes the decision for what is to happen in the earth. Without facing your insecurities, without facing your fears, without embracing evilness, the decisions that you make will be wrong and selfish and they will result in an earth consciousness that is no different than or worse than what it was in the beginning. However, when you allow the wisdom of your creator to do this, to bring you, to, to, um, to show you how to embrace these, these uh, concepts, it is at that point that you can, for example, you do not say, I hope anything will happen because we don't live by hope. We live by knowing. An example of that is this. In this earth consciousness, it's for simplicity's sake. We are looking at all of the bills that have been passed in these states that diminishes the power of the vote for people of color. It is not a hope that this will be mitigated. It will not be mitigated if we don't determine that it is already done. We cannot look at the thought of a Joe Manchin or a cinema. We look at the energy, and what we do is transform that energy. And because we know who we are, because we live in this fifth dimension, because we, there, is, there is a seamless connection between the human and the creator, a seamless unicity, a oneness between the created and the creator. Because of that, when we determine that this will be law, that what it will be. Why? Because we are not speaking politically. We are not speaking on the battlefield in the wilderness where we are seeking to understand who we are. We know who we are. We are speaking in, in a place where time doesn't exist because that's what the universe is. And the universe says, a wound says, that every man in this earth has the opportunity to be human if he chooses to. And everything we do must lead to that goal of humanity. And this deal, this policy, is an example of embracing the reality of being human. And because everyone benefits from it, it is what the universe desires and what we desire. If we say we hope it does this happens, then we are not in agreement with the universe. We do not yet know who we are. We are not yet embracing who we are. We are we are still looking for power. When we when we find what power is, we will see that power is us. We are no longer shrinking because of what people think or say. We know the essence of our being is the power that instilled the policies of the, of the creator in this earth consciousness for the express purpose of transforming an animalistic attitude to a human reality. And when, we, when, when human reality sets in, it is at that point that everything else is overridden, inclusive of the roots of the violence that is in this nation, which is greed slash selfishness or the very reverse of that. All of those things are, are become 
visual, I'm sorry, be, becomes a reality. And the solution to them becomes what our vision is. At this place where we are no longer in the wilderness, we are in the space of spirituality. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So when we when we talk about picking up the cross and following Yeshua, what are we talking about? Everything that is a distraction, everything that is uh, an entanglement. We are to crucify it every single day. And the crucifixion speaks to a transformation because when Jesus was crucified and resurrected, he was transformed into a being that was both human and Elohim, human and spiritual. And I'm not talking about breath, because breath is a form of energy. I'm talking about a physical body recognizing the power of the energy that propels that physical body. That's the transformation that picking up the cross daily brings about for us. That's who we were created to be, or that's who we are being created to be, because creation is still in progress. I'm done. Thank you. Um, does that make sense? Anyone questions or comment? So when when we talk about uh, being one with the Creator, uh, r- returning to beginning or, or recognizing we are at the beginning, I hope we have a, a broader sense of what that means and where we are. Uh, I, I'm going to in, in, impose for a minute, if I if I can, if she doesn't mind, on Barbara. Uh, I want, Bob, if you will, to include your definition of evil, and you said you turned it around and what it means. I want you to mention that again. But I also, if you can and will, tie this lesson in with certainty again, the principle of certainty. Can you do that, please? Barbara, if you're talking, you're on mute. I sure was. <laughs> from the uh, thank you from the Hebrew um, from the Hebrew letters. That's what I looked at when I looked at the word um, evil. Uh, and the word evil was rush. Zedek. And when you turn when you flip those lev when you flip those letters you get to Zedek Rush, which means an awakening. And it's almost like it's an awakening to something more profound. In other words, it's a, it's everything that you guys have been talking about. When we embrace um, evil, in other words, we don't we don't judge it. You can say what it is and what it's perceived, but don't don't judge it as okay. That's that's just totally wrong. Don't don't do that. Just embrace it and understand that the hidden meaning underneath that means that there's a bigger picture underneath here 
that perhaps I don't see right now. But if I know that everything is for my good, if I am in, in union, I am one with my creator, then everything was created for my benefit. Even the perceived things that are I perceive as, hey, that wasn't too good for me. But then when I, when I, when I just understand, well, you know, I don't understand this right now. But, but, but I need the wisdom to understand what, what, the, what the good is in this, what, what's beneficial in this, in this for me. What, what, why is this circumstance coming into my life right now? What, what do I, what's the lesson I need to get out of this right now? I don't understand it right now. I don't see it right now from my, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't understand it. And that's a C with the, with the third eye, not, not C with the physical eye. Because when I see with the physical eye, that's the evil that I see. When I see with the physical eye, I see the physical stuff that leads me to believe that this is not for my good. Remember, we talked about um, seeing with the eyes is a limiting kind of thing. So when I see it with my eyes, it limits what I see. So I need to see with the, with the uh, spiritual eye. And when I, when, I, when I just give myself the time to understand, that's what we need to do. We need to not be so quick to, 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 to say, well, this is this and this is this, if in fact it confuses us. If in fact we don't really understand it, just step back and wait on the wisdom. Just make place for the wisdom to come in, which allows us to understand it. And that's what you were talking about, Ron, when you talk about Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Um, God was saying, just you know, just step back and see. And, you know, you just you just show up. You just show up. In other words, we need to just show up. As Pastor said, face whatever. Uh, we perceive our fears to be, face it, just show up, and then allow the creator to fight the battle in terms of the thoughts and the way that we perceive it. That, hey, this really isn't for your bad. It's for your good. And let me show you how. So certainty then is being certain that because I am one with the creator, and the creator is one with me, that every single thing is for my benefit. Um, I don't know if that gets you uh, what you're talking about in terms of tying certainty to it, Ron, or not. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's it right there. That's, that's, that, that sums it all up. That, that one statement, and, and and that's what we're we're trying to see that all of this is one. All of these words, every page we turn to, everything we talk about, uh, on on these lines, whether or not we, we're speaking directly from uh, the book or not, it, it's all tied together. It fits together. It, it's all a part of the journey. It's all a part of the journey. So we embrace it. Nothing is to bring us fear. We embrace it. We embrace it. That's where we are. We just just we learn to breathe and meditate and embrace who we are. And, and, and whatever happens, we are equipped for it. It is made for us. As a matter of fact, it may be something uh, that, that is brewing out there in, in all of creation, waiting for someone to come along to handle it waiting for someone to bring life to it or bring understanding to it. So we may have been created for such a time as these to bring enlightenment into the earth. And, and when I say no, enlightenment... No, 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 Ron, not me. We were. We were. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and when, I, when, when we say that, that ties together all things. There, there is no time. So those who have my 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 great great grandfathers my my ancestors and your ancestors and those your your children's children who have yet to see the light of this earth they're all here right now in the here and now as you make the crooked straight that's what it's about so this certainty as she said 
it's all for our good. We are not dismayed. Um, we, we may. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just, just all. Uh, go ahead. No, I was, li- I was literally clearing my throat. And I forgot I haven't put the phone on mute. That's all. Okay. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Just, just kind of summed it up. We, we, this, nothing is a coincidence to us. Nothing. We, we are here for a purpose, for a reason. And, and you are the catalyst for what happens in the earth. Okay? Hey, I want uh, to note something, Ron. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Hey, good Mary, Lord. This is Mary. So, yeah, so, I mean, this is, um, I'm enjoying the discussion, and I think I'm getting it. I believe I am. So. When I think about, and I want to make sure that this is correct, that um, when things happen that brings pain or uh, discouragement to me, that it's okay to recognize it, but don't dwell on it, that know that, as, as I think somebody said, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, is that you got a purpose for this, God. So help me to wait and let the purpose take shape. Don't get so caught up in my feelings and my emotions because they pass. I feel this way tomorrow. I may feel one way today and tomorrow is a totally different thing. So just hold on and see what the creator has in store. All these, this pain, all these disasters, it's happening for a reason, for creation to kind of uh, get in, for us to get back in tune to, to going back to the beginning and knowing who we are. So instead of just dwelling on it, and when you say things or do things you know you shouldn't have, don't dwell on it. Move on. Okay, Father, what is it that I need to learn from this and go forward with that? Am I kind of seeing it the right way, or can someone help me, please? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. It, Mary. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would I would say uh, my comment would be that um not not to not dwell on it, but to deal with it um and put it in perspective. Um, it's not like okay, this is happening to me and I shouldn't think about it. You have to be able to deal with it, but also keep it in perspective. You don't judge it. Saying. Yeah. Um, note something in the scripture. What does it say? That scripture you read in Chronicle, it did not sure. say uh, victory on your behalf, did it? It did not no. say, I'm going to defeat them on your behalf. It says, uh, salvation, right? Yes. See the salvation of the Lord. Not the glory, the salvation of the Lord. What is he saying? You will be delivered from your insecurities. You will be delivered from the blindness. You will be delivered from everything that you think has separated you from me. You're, you will be delivered from all the things that you feel like has defeated you. You will be delivered from 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 uh, feeling defeated when you got terminated from a job when you know it was unjust. You will be you will uh, be delivered from that feeling that you have uh, when you listen at um, the the racist comments and the dog whistles that you hear every day. You will be delivered from the the, the emotions. Uh, that 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 uh, causes you pain when when you um, are look at the plight of this world and see that it appears as no one cares about anyone except themselves. <clears throat> when you look at a surplus of vaccine in this country, people don't want and they will they are throwing it away because it expires rather than send it to countries who want it. All of these things will you will be delivered from. Why? Because you are facing them, and I'm showing you the wisdom of them. 
what is the wisdom of throwing away this vaccine as, as opposed to sending it to countries that need it? The wisdom of it is found in, 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 in what it does for those who are seeking truth. It causes them to reach out with, with, with their hearts to those who are desirous of their vaccine, but it also propels those, uh, I'm sorry, encourages those on this journey to stay on the journey because it is necessary to change the hearts of men so that we don't have to depend on a pandemic to bring men to a place of his senses so it can be stopped in its track and, and realize that it is not being human. These are the, the these are this is the salvation, this is the deliverance that Yahweh is talking about when he says to to us, to those who rule as God, Israel, he, when he said, he said to us, be still and see the deliverance, see how it comes about. It is, he did not say de defeating an enemy. He said, the battle is not yours. Why? Because you don't know how to fight this battle. All the efforts you have put in through all of these years have, have brought no changes whatsoever. You've marched in civil rights movement. You've had legislation passed. You have had people who were lynched. You have, you've had people to cry out for justice worldwide, and nothing has changed. Be still and let me show you the wisdom of how to be delivered. However, your deliverance does not come that you are not you are not functioning in this wisdom if you are not functioning on the principle of certainty. Certainty meaning that you know without the shadow of a doubt that I am with you in all things all the time. A certainty that when we speak it happens because all we speak into existence are those things that brings us us meaning mankind to a place where it becomes human. I'm done. I like this. Been a good discussion. I I, I appreciate your your question there. Uh, I hope that brought clarity to someone else who may have had a question. But please feel free. Questions and but I, have, or I, have some, I have something else too. So, as the pastor was saying, is as you speak it, speak it with certainty. You know what's going to happen. When it's going to happen, we don't know, but we're sure that it's going to happen, right? Because sometimes um, we say I, things, we, we think immediate I, results, and it doesn't go that way all the time. And, and, and that is because we are not in the place of certainty. That's why it doesn't go that way. When you are in the place of certainty, it happens then. Just like things happen when Jesus spoke them, it happens with us. Our problem is that we are trying to call those things that are not as though they were. The only reason Moses could do that is because he had been shown what was to be. We are, we are so busy with life and being caught up in religion until we don't hear anything that is to be. What, what are we hearing now? The creator is screaming to us and saying, it is time for the animal to become human. It is time for you to fulfill the, the, the creation that was brought into existence. It's time for you to fulfill your purpose in this earth. Now, because of that, <clears throat> excuse me, when we speak with certainty, not uh, looking with one eye to see if it's going to happen, we speak with such a certainty until it is no different than when we get in our car and turn that key or push that button. We, the expectation is not for it to miss. We know it's going to start. We, we know that. We know that when we flip the switch, the light's coming on. We know that. 
with that kind of certainty. That's what Barbara was talking about when she talked about certainty. Certainty beyond the shadow of any doubt. This is not a thing to test to see if it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. This is a reality that we live in. We are not teaching lessons. We are talking about life. We are describing the personality of what Adam was supposed to be. We are describing the essence of the human. We are describing who we actually are. These are not academic lessons. These are not uh, religious lessons. This is speaking to our life. These are directions for living in this earth, for being the essence of this earth, for bringing mankind to the place of balance, for transforming the hearts of these animalistic, uh, of us as animals into the human itself with the oneness that we have with our creator. Does that make sense to you, Mary? Yes, it does. And I have to admit that I am caught up in religious teachings, and that's kind of a block for me. But you, no, it's not. I, I see it, certainty. I understand it. I'm speaking it into existence. Um, and thank you for that. Thank you so much. See, see, you have to bring yourself into the place of existence before you can bring anything else into existence. What am I saying? If you, can, if, you, if you cannot believe with a certainty that there is no difference between you and Jesus, there's no difference between you and Elohim, there's no difference between you and the Father, if you cannot embrace that with a certainty, then you can't bring anything into existence for the benefit of humanity because that certainty is not there. If you don't believe that you are a mechanic, you will never repair a car. If you don't believe that you are a doctor, you will never, ever diagnose a patient. You have to believe it. You believe who you are, and then you can function as who you are. Does that make sense? Because up to this point, we have been taught naming and claiming. Uh, don't claim my house. You didn't pay for it. That's not what this is about. This is not about gaining materially. This is about gaining who you are. This is about finding yourself. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I was thinking about, you know, I always believed that I was, uh, this is, that I was the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus and that Jesus is my brother. And so we're the same. We are the same. I believe that. And I, 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 I am walking in it now. I'm claim. I'm walking in it now. I'm working on who I am and understanding who who I am. This just that simple. So this is helping me, and I really appreciate you taking the time to to talk to me, answer my question. Yes, ma'am. For that, those questions are answered about it. Thank you. Anyone okay. else? I have a question. Uh, so when we become or act upon, when we start living in certainty, are we in the fifth dimension then? Are we, is that where, the place that we are? The whole idea of certainty is the fifth dimension, is the age of occurrence, is the, is the energy field. Okay. Where, where you're able to, um, uh, to express who you are in terms of the of the power that that uh, the the power of the energy that that you are. You good, Evelyn? Yeah. So, are we to become certainty or live in certainty? Certainty. Certainty. Certainty is simply is simply living without doubt. That's 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 what it is. Okay. It's embracing who you are without doubting. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else?
Well, um, I hope I hope that's clear. I hope everybody uh, gained a thought from that. If not, as always, you you have uh, there's always space for questions uh, at any time. So uh, that's all that I have. If there's nothing else anyone wants to add. Uh, um, I think I, I don't think we. I think we'll address it again tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I uh, I, I appreciate everybody's input and question and and uh, again uh, let it kind of uh, rest in inside in your soul and and, and see if you have some. Uh, questions or other additional thoughts tomorrow, okay? If, uh, if there's nothing hey, Ron, else, before you go, a... yes, sir. Before you go, Ron, uh, to, yes, sir. To, to those of you, I, I said in the past, hear what the universe is saying and and share it with you. That's what this is about. So if there are, if those, there are those of you, especially uh, the facilitators, the teachers, if you see something, if you have been shown something through no period of meditation that you know that you need to share with us, just give me a call or shoot me a text so that we can be be ready to receive it from you. Just let me know. As Ron did uh, with this, just let me know. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not saying you got to clear anything with me. I'm just saying so that when we come on the line, we know that you are the one who's going to facilitate. That's all. Okay? And for example, if 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 you are if you want to do the comparison between the uh, Mayot principles and the Ten Commandments, then just do that. Just let me know. And and you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have the, a clear pathway to it, to the understanding. If the if the thought is there, we together can travel the journey of wisdom to the place of understanding so we can have a common experience. I'm done. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope everybody have, have a great Sunday. Uh, be safe and uh, look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Thank you for the opportunity to share and like you. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, Ron. Bye. 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 Bye.